Hello, welcome to Anita the Pedagogue channel. Today, we continue with our literature lessons. We want to look at a drama analysis of J.C. de Graft's play titled Sons and Daughters. Let's begin with our lesson objectives. So we'll be looking at a biography of the playwright, the title, the setting, the plot analysis, characterization, literary devices, themes, and some likely examination questions. Let's begin with a short biography of the playwright, J.C. de Graft. Joseph Coleman de Graft was born in Cape Coast, in the Gold Coast, present-day Ghana, and received his secondary schooling there at Enfancipim in 1953 at the age of 29 and after an education interrupted by four years teaching at his old school, De Graft graduated from the University College of the Gold Coast, one of the first undergraduates to take English honors. In 1955, De Graft returned to Enfancipim School where he taught English and was in charge of the Enfancipim Drama Laboratory. A major influence on his work was Shakespeare, and he acted in and directed several of Shakespeare's plays. He wrote plays himself, and one of the best known is Sons and Daughters, which was published in the year 1964, days back from this time. It is a contribution to debates about careers and values among secondary school pupils. This is the play we'll be looking at actually, Sons and Daughters. So let's zoom and quickly look at the title. The title gives an impression that the narrative is likely to be about a family with male and female children. But after studying the drama, it is realized that the story centers around two characters, Aaron and her sister Manan, who encounter challenges choosing their professions or life careers. The setting of this drama, which is the time and place the drama is happening, is predominantly at the home of the Ofusu family. The time is post-colonial Ghana, as the characters through their dialogue show that they are not in the 21st century. Again, the mention of black and white pictures indicates it was indeed set before the 21st century, therefore post-colonial Ghana perhaps. The use of Ghanaian names such as Ofosu, Bonu, Fosua, Ajua, etc. also show that the story is set in Ghana. The mention of even the town second day by Hannah as a place the Fosu family once lived indeed shows that the setting of sons and daughters is Ghana. Let's move on and look at the plot analysis. Now the plot is the sequence of events of a narrative or a story. And so we have the beginning or the exposition, the rising action, where there is conflict which progresses into the climax, then the fallen action where things are getting resolved right into the resolution or the end of the story. So I want to begin with the exposition which introduces the audience or readers to the setting of the Ofosu family house. This helps the audience to deduce the kind of characters they are likely to meet. Also, the existence of the following items like the large mahogany elephant stew, an array of expensive drinks and cheap glasses, a radiogram, like a radio set in today, a few photographs in black and white, colored wall calendar advertising heavy duty track ties in the home of the Fosu family gives a lot of impression about them and even the time the story was set. We are first introduced to the character Aaron and his good friend Array. The dialogue between these characters quickly foreshadows the challenges or conflict that will happen in the story. That is career choices, parental influence 
on their children's career. The need for children to have jobs that bring prestige to the family, professional jobs and non-prestigious jobs. Avre is a successful up-and-coming artist and Aaron shares his challenges with him. The rising action sets in. We realize Mr. James Ofosu, Aaron's father, has refused to allow him to become an artist and insists he becomes a mechanical engineer. And his younger sister, Manan, is not spared as she has been denied the opportunity to be a dancer but to become Ghana's first lady lawyer, as his father, Mr. Ofosu, puts it. Avre has, however, encouraged Aaron to be more tolerant of his father but his quick temper would not let him understand his friend Are. Manan is introduced in the story and we realize that Are, from his dialogue with her, shows much care and affection towards her. She even agrees to attend Are's art exhibition. Manan's challenges is evident in her uncheerful demeanor. She gathers courage to complain to her mother about lawyer Bonu who is Mr. James Ofosu's best friend, the one whom he has asked to mentor Manan to become a lawyer by sending Manan to work in his law firm. Aunt Fosua, the sister of James Ofosu, an auntie of Aaron and Manan, is introduced in the drama. She argues with the wife of James, Hannah. She blames her for allowing Are to court Manan instead of lawyer Bunu. It is her constant interference in the business of Hannah and her children that leads to their constant arguments. Manan complained about lawyer Bunu's harassment at the office, which includes he bends over me and wants to kiss me, he tries to embrace me. These are the reasons why Manan wants to quit her work internship with lawyer Bunu, and she made these complaints to her mother, Hannah. James Ofosu also condemns professions and jobs that do come without a high pay or salary. He considers those jobs as jobs that are not prestigious or honorable. He even considers the job of a teacher's a non-prestigious job in spite of Hannah's explanation to persuade him to recognize the significant role teachers play. Again, when Hannah puts these issues of man and harassment before James, he blames his family for plotting against him. To him, man and Hannah have conspired to met out allegation of harassment against lawyer Bono, his best friend. In addition, Aaron shows up with a letter from an art school which have reserved a place for him. And that is very disappointing for James. All these infuriate him and he bursts out and expresses his thoughtfulness and hard work to give them a better future. But the fact that they take it for cow dung. He explains his reasons for objecting to Manan and Aaron's careers as he thinks they will be about dancing half naked on a bloody stage and painting a lot of foolish pictures. Due to his hot temper and anger, the family decides that George should not go and see his father for it will aggravate the situation. The climax of the story sets in when DeGraft uses dramatic irony to cause lawyer Bono to try to rape or sexually harass Manan and then James finds out and sends him out of his house. Interestingly, lawyer Bono offers James money to keep the issue under the carpet, but he refuses. As the story moves into the fallen action, James laments about the dishonesty of lawyer Bono despite his education and reputation. In contrast, the girls project Hannah's loyalty and support to her family even though she is illiterate. In the end of the resolution, James reluctantly allows Man and Aaron to pursue their chosen careers. As he learns about Ares' success on the radio concerning his art exhibition, 
Also, Hannah plays a key role in convincing James to allow Aaron to pursue art, since that profession can pay well also. George Ofosu also plays an important role of letting Aaron know the importance of money when working. The story comes to a happy ending with a remarkable statement from Array, where the graph projects one key theme by saying, and now, may we each be given the strength to achieve our heart desire in our work. Dramatic Irony The actions of lawyer Bonu while he was alone with Manon at her father's living room were incidents that the audience were well aware of, but lawyer Bonu had no idea of Jim's presence in the house. Therefore, this is a dramatic irony because the audience are aware of something that the characters are not aware of. Another dramatic irony is when Aunt Fosua is unaware of the incidents that happened between lawyer Bonu and Manan and the reason for the conflict. Because of this, she asks Manan to apologize to lawyer Bonu and this also leads to an irony. Characterization Hano Fusu. She is a beautiful woman of about 45 years. She is an illiterate but very well brought up. She has a calm demeanor, but that does not deter her from challenging and questioning unacceptable behaviors and events around her, like Aunt Fosua's uncalled for interference in her nuclear family. As the wife of James Fosu, she is respectful and a good wife. She shows her motherly nature in how she approached her husband, James, when Manon complained of lawyer Bonu's harassment. The beginning of the story, she was in a helpless state concerning her children's careers, but later on, she serves as an advocate for her children, especially the role she played in convincing James to allow Manon and Aaron pursue the careers of their choices. Aaron Ofosu Aaron is the son of Hannah and James Ofosu. He is a young man passionate about taking art as a career. However, his dad, James, thinks he should pursue a career in mechanical engineering, which causes a conflict. He is quick-tempered as he quickly got angry and defies his father's instructions by going ahead of him to apply to an art school abroad. Aaron is overconfident and thinks he's smart by keeping the position of pursuing art for fun and not for money. But his decisions clearly are always not the best. To outwear his friend, Aaron needs to be patient even though he is good. Aaron is also strong-willed as he challenges his father's position on his career choice by choosing to disobey him in order to achieve his dream profession. Aunt Fosua, she is the sister of James Ofosu and an aunt to George Kofi, Aaron and Manan. She has the habit of interfering in other people's business. She argues with Hannah due to this behavior. Hannah warns her at some points not to interfere. Run my affairs for me. She believes in polygamy and has been married thrice already. She tries to get Manan and lawyer to get married against the wish of Manan and her parents. The graphs, through the use of dramatic irony and exaggeration, expose this behavior of Aunt Fosua. She is also quite traditional as she accuses Mrs. Bonu of not being a woman after asking her, Call yourself a woman? Have you ever won beats in your life? This shows that she adheres to customs as evident in many ethnic groups in Ghana. This also implies that she sees herself as a perfect woman, irrespective of her being thrice married. James Ofosu, he is a very hard working transport manager. He believes in working hard to provide for his family. He is mostly decently dressed and looks happier when he is in the company of his friends. His education truncated at elementary school. so. He tries to ensure his children get a better education. 
His friendship with Lawyer Bono shows he is not confident in himself and aspires to be very rich. No wonder his living room had expensive wine and cheap glasses, which show that he cares about his reputation and family prestige. He blames Lawyer Bono for being a bad friend and being dishonest in spite of his education level and reputation. Again, James Ofosu can be described as an example of a patriarch who does not want his authority challenged. He wants his children to appreciate the sacrifices he makes for them in their education to enable them become successful. He likes to work hard for his money. His two children, Manon and Aaron, seem to challenge his authority, which reveals his quick temperedness. Unlike his elder sons, George, the doctor, and Kofi, the chartered accountant, who seem obedient because they loved the professions he suggested to them, these two, Monon and Aaron, are like modern day children who always challenge the status quo. James changed in decisions about his children's profession by accepting Monon and Aaron's desired careers at the end of the story, shows that indeed. James is a good father who at the end puts his family first. Arre Arre is a close friend of Aaron and Manon. He is a successful artist who has successfully organized an art exhibition and some of his paintings have been sold. He is admired by Aaron and Manon but James also dislikes him because he thinks he has a negative influence on Aaron does not want to venture into painting or art. This does not deter Are from being a good friend to Aaron as he gives good advice to him and is a supportive friend. On the other hand, Aunt Fosua thinks Are has other motives for frequenting the Fosus. She believes Are wants to date or court Manon which remains an allegation throughout the story. Lawyer Bono He is a lawyer by profession. He always looks smart and neatly dressed in expensive suits. This shows he is a very rich lawyer. Also, he manages a law firm where he was working and trained Manan, the daughter of James, to be a lawyer. He however harassed Manan at her office and even tried to rape her in the Ofosu family house. Even though he assisted James' two sons, Kofi and George, get schools in the UK, he betrayed the trust of James, his good friend, by trying to sexually harass her daughter. Aunt Fosua, however, admired and liked Lawyer Bono because he was rich. She also mistook James' decision of allowing Lawyer Bono to train Manan to mean he wanted them to get married eventually. Mrs. Bono is the wife of Lawyer Bono who happens to be the close friend of James Ofosu. She looks exotic as she wears expensive flattery clothes and ornaments. She disapproves her husband's friendship with the Ofosu family because she thinks they are of a low social class compared to herself and her husband. When she barges into the Ofosu family house upon a hint from a clerk in her husband's office, she challenges Aunt Fosua that she will not allow her husband to marry Manan. This clearly shows she is against polygamy compared to Aunt Fosua. Even though Aunt Fosua argues with her that she is not a woman enough, a reason why Lawyer Bono seemed interested in Manan, she does not respond to this leaving audience and readers to guess. George, he is one of James and Hannah's older sons. He is a successful doctor who loves his profession. He loves to play tennis at his spare time. He also shows care for his family, especially the health of his dad, James. He played a key role in convincing James to allow Aaron to be an artist. George is calm and more to tolerant compared to Aaron. Ajoa, she is the maid servant of the Fosu family and the training to become a lady with good virtues. She is mostly a vacation helping her madam, Hannah. She is humble and obedient and she keeps calm. When on one occasion, Aaron 
rained unpleasant words on her for a mistake she did. But she did not react badly. She seems a faithful servant of the Ofosu family. The literary devices. There has been the use of several literary devices, the use of idioms. Loya Bonu could be a snake in the grass. One can take a horse to the water, but one cannot force it to drink. Also, there has been there is a use of a saying, No, my dear fellow, you'd be cutting your own truth. So cutting your own truth. Also, all I need really is a place in art school and engineering can go hang itself. Go hang itself. Personification. They do not give themselves hearts and soul to her. They are ashamed of her because she wears no golden ornaments. And here, art is personified as a woman. There's also the use of alliteration. Mana simply smiled. Lady lawyer. There are other literary devices. There's a lot of rhetorical questions. Do you understand me? Do you know everything in this room outrages my sense of beauty? What sort of man do you think I am? How can I trust such a son? How can I? Tell me, Hannah, how can I? So, that is also a rhetorical question. We have repetition to make him into an engineer. An engineer, never mind you. Let's move on to the themes. Interference in people's issues leads to arguments. So, in criticizing or addressing issues that concern other people, it is very important to leave out people's private issues unless they ask for your suggestion or opinion. As for Swa, is a nosy character whose constant interference in the issues of Hannah's marriage and the lives of her children lead to several conflicts in the drama. Constructive criticism is good, but Unnecessary interference in other people's issues leads to conflict. Another thing we can talk of is the handling of issues of sexual harassment. So harassment can be explained as an aggressive pressure or intimidation. Malan was harassed by lawyer Bunu, his superior at work, to give in to his demand for an affair with her. This caused Manan to be cheerless and sad. In addition, lawyer Bono promises to help convince her father James to allow her pursue her dancing career. Manan's mother played a key role in ensuring she brought this issue to James, who dismissed it as a baseless allegation until, in his own presence, he chanced on lawyer Bono trying to rape Manan. So this theme is one that runs through time and very relevant for parents to give listening ear to their children when they share issues of any form of harassment. Prestigious jobs versus ordinary jobs. So one of the issues the story revolves around is the issue of the character's man and Aaron deciding to pursue arts and dancing which were not deemed prestigious in the past. Some people, even in these contemporary times, also do not regard some professions because they either do not come with a high paycheck or just not noble enough to them. According to James Ofosu, professions like being a lawyer, doctor, accountant, and engineer are more prestigious than being an artist, dancer, teacher, etc. At the end of the drama, the graphs advocates that everyone should have the liberty to pursue the careers of their choice. There's also the theme of betrayal. When one's closest friends or relatives are disloyal to them, they feel betrayed because they expect such people to be loyal and honest. James cherished his friendship with lawyer Bono but he felt betrayed when he confirmed that indeed he was helping his daughter, whom he had asked him to be a lawyer. This betrayal caused 
James and Loyabunu's friendship to be ruined. James walked Loyabunu out of his house after chancing on him harassing manner. The graft highlights the need for friends and relations to remain loyal and not betray the trust of their loved ones. There's also the theme of intergenerational clash. In the narrative, there is a clear conflict between two generations, James's generation and Aaron and Manan's. The conflict is between these generations as far as their choice of job is concerned. While Aaron and Manan are not fixated on traditionally known, well-respected professions, compared to jobs in the creative arts industry and media, where they want to B. The graph projects the need for all to embrace professions, especially if they are one's desire or passion. Well, let's take a look at some likely examination questions to describe the following characters James Ofosu, Manan, and Loya Bonu. How did the graph use dramatic irony to achieve an intense climax in this drama? Explain two themes of the drama. Identify some literary devices in the drama. How relevant is the opening scene of this drama? We have looked at the title, the setting, plot analysis, characterization, some literary devices, some themes, and some likely examination questions for sons and daughters. We also looked at a brief biography of J.C. De Graft, the playwright. I hope this lesson was useful to you. Please put in your comments or questions and I'll respond to you. Do like, share and subscribe to this channel. Until I come your way again, keep learning and be the best version of yourself.